Good afternoon, good afternoon. It is Saturday. Uh, it's been a while since I've been up here actually. Um, and things have changed quite a lot. Quite a lot of stuff has come up. Things have grown a lot and some things have collapsed a lot. <laughs> so I might just have a bit of a nose around what's going on up here. Ooh, it's a grey, grey day. Things are starting to look a bit tired really, aren't they? And all the leaves are dropping off the trees. The field beans, on the other hand, have come up a treat. Look at these chaps. Ooh. There's a little bit of a bald patch going on in there, but I think it is because I've just scuffed a bit more thing because you can see they are sort of starting to appear in there. I think, yeah, I think they are coming up, but yeah. I'm quite pleased with the amount that managed to escape the squirrels and mice and the garlic. So I only planted this garlic, what was it, last week or was it the week before? I think it was last week. Anyway, <laughs> it's all made an appearance. So this is all the hard neck garlic that I planted out last week and it looks like every single one of them has come up which is pretty amazing. Oh no, there's one, there's one that hasn't so far. But other than that, amazing. So that's pretty good. I'm hoping to get my hands on one more hard neck variety, but probably more about that next week. So yeah, garlic is looking good. I never got the elephant garlic in, you know, cause I ended up, I was planting this in the rain and trying to make a bit of a quick escape. I forgot about the elephant garlic. So I need to get that into this bed. And then I've got a kind of a whole section on the end here that will need to be cleared. And then I'll put the other garlic in there. So that's quite exciting. So moving on to the collapso category, <laughs> the crown prince have really had enough. I mean, look at these poor chaps. They have basically just given up. This is, that's not a healthy crown prince. <laughs> but we have got a couple of fruit. We've got one over there. We have got this one down here. And there's also one over here underneath the pear tree. I mean, they're not massive by any stretch of the imagination, but they're a fairly decent size. So three crown prints of three plants uh, is not a great, uh, not a great yield, but considering the year we've had, and I know quite a lot of people haven't even got one, you know, winter squash off plants. So I'm pretty pleased with it. We've also got a couple of really tiny Marina di Chogia. They never really grew into anything, but I think they'll still taste good. And a couple of the mashed potato squash, which we haven't tried yet, but we do have one at home. So hopefully I'll be able to report back soon. Okay, the butternut. These are growing so quickly. Remember we didn't have any for months and months and months. And these just started about, what, five weeks ago? And suddenly we've got these, they're a decent size. We just need a little bit more time, a bit more time and a bit more sunshine. It's very much gray skies, intermittent rain showers, and just a bit gloomy up here at the moment, or not just up here <laughs> in general, it's just a bit gloomy. And because of that, like when you look at the forecast, we've got about four or five days more of this kind of rainy gray weather coming our way. And I'm a bit worried about the Greek Gigante. So obviously we cleared the Bellottis, what was it, last week or the week before? So they're completely gone, don't have to worry about them anymore. The Greek Gigantes, on the other hand, they have a lot more foliage than the Bellottis and they didn't dry out during the time that we had that last bit of sunshine. You know, like second week in October, we had a bit of a burst of warm and sun. Well, that seems to have thoroughly deserted us and it's all a bit soggy. And I'm a bit worried that the Greek Gigantes aren't gonna dry on the plant. There's still masses of them on there. As they dried, I've been picking them off like each week, but I just, they just look like they're starting to go a bit soft. Like the last set that I bought, a couple of them, although they were dried off, the, the pods were really papery. They had a bit of kind of mould inside and I'm not that happy with it. So I'm thinking that what I'm going to do is probably strip the majority of the bean pods off today and freeze some of them fresh. So the reason that you kind of let them dry out is so that you can store them in jars or whatever as dried beans for use later in the year. Although we let them dry off, we don't actually store them that way. We store them in the freezer because we've had so many problems with weevils and things getting into them or things already being into them and hatching after they've dried out. So we freeze them anyway. And I figure there can't be much difference freezing them fresh to freezing them fully dried. So they'll be semi-dried. 
So I think that's what we're going to do. And then I will use some of them fresh as we take them off the vine today. And some of them I will just freeze as frozen fresh beans. That's my plan anyway, because the forecast is just not looking like bean drying weather. <laughs> so yeah, that's the thing. So can you see, they are starting to go brown, but there are a couple that have actually dropped off like this one down here. Like, can you see this one? Like that's going, that's going mouldy. The bean will still be all right in there for the moment, but I really don't want that to happen to the rest of them. So I think as time they come off. quite a lot of beans might have some of these really green ones for dinner tonight actually hmm hello pussycat okie well if that is the plan for dinner I'm gonna need some tomatoes. We've got some at home, but I've got a feeling that some of the ones that I left in the polytunnel are probably right by now. So let's have a look. First thing to say is the basil isn't looking too hot. <laughs> some of it's looking really nice, like this piece, but some of it isn't. I've got some seedlings, uh, which I will take some home. I did plant some in here. That's these guys that are still looking okay, but I'll take the rest of them home. I might also dig this one up. This was the one that I bought at Ripley Nurseries. And I've planted it in here, but obviously it's quite late in the season and it's kind of going over, so I might need to take that home. Chard's looking good though, coming strong. The pink mizuna looking lovely. Their red chicory's also looking really good. I must get the green one in actually. Parsley's looking good. We actually have some capsicum peppers coming along here. This is the black Zulu one. Isn't that a beautiful colour? and bits and pieces you know it's all been dribs and drabs this year we've got a couple of these banana peppers on the go uh we've got one very small very late aubergine thanks very much for that so i'm really pleased that the things that we've got in here to carry on are looking really good uh i mean tomatoes still got some to pick obviously the tomatoes are very sparse after i ripped them all out but the ones i did leave they are ripening this one is the derby stripe and i've also got this one which is sun drop over here which has been amazing it's still going strong and there's masses left to ripen on it this one's split unfortunately but <laughs> i'm gonna be eating it tonight anyway so it really doesn't matter but look loads are coming but anyway most of the stuff i've got to do today is outside let's go stick these beauties in the basket yeah, and try not to trip over the hose. <laughs> right, one thing that is not a success um, is you know where I planted the chimera wrapper? It's in this bed just below me. 
uh, not an iota of its left. So first of all, the badgers kicked it all up and upturned its roots. So um, that didn't give it a great start. But then since then, I think the slugs have just hoovered the whole lot off the top because there isn't, it's not even a sign of it in there. Barren, sparse, a chimidirapa wasteland. <laughs> yeah, there isn't, there is not even a flash of green in there, nothing. Luckily, I've got some growing in the greenhouse, which I'm going to plant out as plug plants and hope that they avoid the slugs because annoying. Seems the field beans have all uh, managed to avoid the meeses and squigs. I'm thinking about planting my actual like broad beans, broad beans for eating out just straight into the ground. Normally I would start them in the greenhouse, but I mean, they did all right, didn't they? This is the bed I'm planning to put them in. So it's on one end of where the chard is. Just doing half a bed sown at this time and I'll do another half a bed sown in spring. But yeah, I'm pretty optimistic from what happened with the field beans. So I might do that today. The green manure, which was the mixed one up in the top bed is coming up a treat. That's all looking pretty good. You can see kind of various pea species and rye grass and all that kind of stuff all coming up so i'm pretty pleased with that these radicio are looking a uh, gorgeous look at that beauty it's starting to heart up which is rather exciting but yeah despite everything being very very damp the dahlias are still going some pretty nice looking lettuces down here we've been eating these we eat you can see how they've come up from the bottom we've been picking the outer leaves of these So this is what we've got going on in here at the moment. We have got, you know, very, very few hot lemon chilies, which is a shame, but we have been eating them and they are fabulous. So even just having a couple is better than none. A couple of peppers and things coming along. This aubergine has only just decided it's going to start flowering, which I'm sorry, mate, just too little too late. Bits of seedlings, so none of the flowers have come up yet, which is uh, to be expected. I only sowed them about <laughs> four days ago. Uh, this is the mustard that I've got to get out. Uh, this is the chimidi wrapper, which is the replacement for the ones that the badgers kind of dug up, then the slugs ate. <laughs> so I've got that one. We have got some more coriander coming out here. And actually, I'll just show you the coriander that we've got growing under the EnviroMesh because it's looking really happy. And you'll know, like if you've been following for a while, I have had a really hard time growing coriander, so I'm well chuffed with that. We'll pick some today. I fear, I fear for the melons. There's this one. I mean, it's sort of, it's there, is it there? Oh, I'm just a bit sad, really. And then there's this little one here. I don't think I'm going to be feasting on melons. <laughs> okay, let's get some coriander. It's growing fantastically. And so are the carrots that we put in as well. This is in the carrot bed. Let's just take the box off and have a look at them. Just ignoring the coriander for a start. How good do the carrots look? They're coming on fantastically well. I'm really, really pleased with them. We might even get some for Christmas, which would be amazing. Obviously we've got the EnviroMesh over them at the moment, but we will replace that with like polytunnel plastic at some point. So that should extend their season. And look at this. We have tried so many times to grow coriander. <laughs> and this one, mum actually just direct sowed it straight into this bed at the same time that we sowed the carrots. And I am actually giddy. It really looks like coriander. Normally it's just like this really kind of ropey, short stuff. It's not very lush. And then it goes to seed almost instantaneously before it's even done anything, before it's even pickable. But look at this. Oh, this is the thing. I love this. When you haven't been able to grow something and it's just like your nemesis, basically, on the plot. And then you get this. You get this gorgeous, lush, like, <laughs> could come from Waitrose. I, <laughs> I am so excited about this coriander. Seriously. Seriously. What a joy. I'm unreasonably excited about this. <laughs> Millie, 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 Millie. Here you go. <laughs> oh, you're 
Right, next thing on the agenda, when we were arriving, um, saw George on the pass. He's the guy who's got an allotment up here. And he said that he has got some Nautia, <laughs> like as in K-N, Nautia uh, Macedonica seedlings that have like self-seeded all over the place. So I'm gonna go and claim some of them. I might take a pot with me actually. That would be a good idea. Right, I'll just grab a pot and do that again. That'll do. Right, let's try that again. Heading up round the back side of the plot, this is the opposite side of the site from where our allotment is and it's looking very autumnal. And this is George's plot. He grows masses of flowers and I mean, look, they just look fantastic. Got loads of really interesting bits and pieces around. Mostly grown for cut flower, whereas I find it really difficult to cut the flowers, but you know. And these chaps under here are the self-seeded Nautia. Bonk. <laughs> Bonk indeed. There's another one there. Lovely. Another one there. Oh, gorgeous. Any more? You can have as many as you like, oh, honestly. Yeah, just a little clump would be great. I might put some in the garden at home as well. Oh, perfect. Thank you. It's all right. You're more than welcome That's to. Fine. They're only going, they're only going on the compost heap otherwise. <laughs> That's, why, yeah. that's perfect, yeah, no, that's, oh, that's great. Because that, that's what they end up like. Yeah, so they get quite quite Ch big. Quite chunky. Yeah, oh, gorgeous. Yeah, you get Thank a you. lot of flowers out of them in the, year, in the season too. Yeah. This is, I'm really pleased with this. Have a look at these. I mean, I grow a lot of beans, but there's always... <laughs> these are magnificent. God, they are, and it's like pearlescent blue yeah, as well, they, isn't it? Yeah, it dries black. Oof, a gorge. And this is um this this is lazy housewife. Oh, that's the lazy housewife. These are the flatter ones, did you say? Yeah, uh, well they are when they're not full of beans. Yeah. <laughs> but you can see how many I've left on. Yeah, I I no. Couldn't, I couldn't eat them all. <laughs> Was this the one that you double sewed? No, that's the one I double sewed. Oh. There's twelve there. There's six. <laughs> supposed, there was supposed to be six and six, but actually there's twelve. Right. Twelve and zero. Yeah. <laughs> Look at all those beans. Here we go, all sorts of goodies. Oh, that's good. We've got, they are the naughtier, the ones at the, the bottom Different, there, yeah, those okay. ones. Yeah. And then we've got some tomatillos, oh, some beauties. Yes. And this one is a catanache, a blue flower. It looks a bit like the chicory. Right. But it's like a triple and uh, just gorgeous. So oh, yeah, fantastic. Thank you very much, George. What a pile of goodies. Right, I need some mint before we go. And the only other thing that I haven't been able to do that I really wanted to was to sow the broad beans. But I thought the seed was up here and I can't find it. So it's obviously not. It's obviously at home. So that will be a job for tomorrow. Gigantes. Okay, this is one of the most simple recipes <laughs> ever, and it doesn't have to be with Greek Gigantes, it can be with Bellotti beans, it can be with oh, pretty much anything. It's just beans in a tomato sauce, but it's with cinnamon and mint, and I know that might sound a bit odd. What you really need to be doing is kind of sat looking over the Mediterranean with a really cold glass of wine sun setting, that sort of thing. Unfortunately, 
uh, South London isn't providing me with that, but uh, I can imagine. I've got the wine at least, I suppose. And the cinnamon and the mint together. Oh, so good. And I'm not a vegetarian. This is a vegetarian recipe, but how I like them best is these beans, really gorgeous with lamb kebabs. Just chunks of lamb marinated in olive oil, lemon juice and salt, straight on the barbecue. These beans, a really crunchy salad. I mean, sounds pretty good to me. <laughs> That's how I like the best, but I'm not having them like this today. I'm just going to be cooking the beans. I normally cook this with dried beans. This is the first time I'm going to be doing it with fresh, but I don't see there's going to be a massive difference. And I would normally cook it in really quite a large batch and then freeze it because uh, it heats up perfectly well from frozen. I'm not doing that today just because it's what we're having for dinner and I just, I'm not like in the mode for making masses and masses of it. Um, but yeah, you can make masses and masses of it. Maybe start with a small bit in case you make like a ton of it and then decide you don't like it. But yeah. Mm. Anyway, so these are the ones that we brought back today. You can see some of them are pretty dry and some of them are really, really fresh. I've got a bag of dried ones in here. They'll just be shelled and frozen. But I'm gonna use the freshest ones today because they've got the least chance of drying here at home. I've said before that Greek Gigantes are just a form of runner bean. They've just got terrible strings, so you wouldn't want to eat them like a fresh runner bean and they are a white seeded variety. So you get these magnificent, huge white seeds. You can eat white seeded runner bean varieties, but for a size comparison, like that's a normal runner bean seed left to go big. And this is a Greek Gigantes. You can see like they are just, there's quite a big size difference. They do taste the same. So you can eat white runner bean seeds, no problem. Any runner bean seeds, to be honest, you know the dark ones with the pink speckles. The only problem with the dark ones is that they turn everything you're eating to sludge color, which is why I tend to eat the white ones rather than those ones. Right, let's cook them. This starts with onion and garlic done in the food processor with a little bit of water. If you put a bit of water in with it, it makes a puree rather than just chops them. So this is a really fine kind of almost like a paste. So cook off the water until it's a bit drier and then add some olive oil. I'm currently really overexcited about these sprinkles uh, silicon spatulas that I've got. I bought a pan that you can't use metal tools in, so I picked these up as a bargain and I love them. <laughs> right, once the onions are cooked down, you want to add some tomatoes. So it can be tin tomatoes. These happen to be our own tomatoes, just put straight through the moolie. Quite a lot of the tomatoes that we picked off at the end of when I was stripping them have gone a bit sad, so we've just been processing them by putting them through this thing. It's so simple. It's not electric or anything. It is just a handle and a grater and you stick your tomatoes in and then you turn the handle and it makes a puree. So basically it just kind of crushes them and takes the skin off. But this is how we process loads of our tomatoes when we have a glut year and then just bag up what's left underneath and freeze it as a tomato passata. But yeah, sorry, going back to the beans. It's just a case of tomatoes, a couple of bay leaves and a bit of stock. So vegetable stock or chicken stock or anything you like. For the amount that I'm doing here, it's about half a litre. So not an enormous amount. And then just throw in your beans. I'm not entirely sure how long this is actually gonna to take to cook this time because I've never cooked them straight from fresh. As this boils down, I won't add more water. I'll just add more tomatoes and it will form a really lovely, rich tomato sauce around the beans of joy. And then it's just a case of ground cinnamon. I mean, you can stick a whole stick, stick the stick of cinnamon. You can stick a whole stick of cinnamon or half a stick, you know, a couple of inches of it in the pot and have it cooking as you're going. I don't actually have any stick cinnamon at the moment, which is unusual. It's meant to be in, I think that jar there, if you can see, there's no sticks in there. So I've just got the ground cinnamon, which works perfectly well. I'm gonna put a teaspoon of this in there, straight into the tomato sauce and a handful of fresh mint. The fresh mint will go in right before the end. You can use dried mint. If you're using dried mint, I'd put it in a bit earlier because if you just 
put a load of dried mint in right before you eat it, it'd be like, yeah, you don't want that. <laughs> but chewing through chaff. Uh, but yeah, so I'm gonna put this in, leaves them to cook down, uh, then it's a bit of mint on top at the end and we are good to go. Fresh bread, bit of salad. These actually only took about 45 minutes to cook, obviously because they're fresh. If they're dried, two hours or so, might not look much, but so good. Just about to head off. I've forgotten the broad beans again. <laughs> so uh, gotta get them before we go anywhere. in here no broad beans I mean maybe they are in the shed We have beans. <laughs> I still haven't made a decision to go between Agodolci or the Sutton. What do we think the winter's going to be like? Is it going to be a horrible winter? Is it going to be wind and... Or is it going to be a really mild winter? What do we do? Well, last winter was a pretty harsh winter and we went with the Agodolci and it worked perfectly. So I'm going to do that again. Right, decision made, Agodolci Claudia. Yeah, that's all we're doing. Okay, so the back of the packet of the Agodolci says to grow them in a zigzag pattern, which is what we would do anyway. It says to put them 60 centimetres apart and... I mean, I'd only get two rows in there. Yeah, so I'm not going to do them 60 centimetres apart. I'll do them about 40. But that means that I can get three good double rows in this half a bed. And I think that'll do us for the autumn sowing. And then I'll do the same again in spring.
Okay, so the reason that I've done them in kind of, oh, there's an aeroplane. Okay, so the reason that I'm sewing them in the double strips like that is just to make it easier later on when I'm tying them up or like giving them a bit of support. So last year when I had the beans at the end of the bed, like the one next to the shed, um, the winter was so harsh and uh, the beans went completely black. Broad beans are really tough and I've never known them to have a problem. Like when it, when it freezes, they do flop like that, but they always recover. They went black last year, which for here is really, really unusual. And I wasn't convinced they were gonna survive, which meant that I didn't tie them up because I'd kind of written them off. I didn't put the stakes in early enough and then, you know how it goes, you just don't do something and then it gets worse and they're all flopping over and then you can't straighten them up because broad beans snap really easily. So it was a bit of a disaster. But the beans that I left from the field manure, you know, I left like a strip of them in the middle. Well, initially they hadn't flopped because they were so tightly packed because I wasn't using them for cropping. They were just really tightly packed. So they held each other up. So they were still really straight. But when I chopped most of the bed down and just left that strip down the center, it was so easy to tie them up because I just put a stake at both ends and then looped a piece of string around and then did a bit of a kind of an intertwine and it worked really, really well. Far better than what I was trying to do with my evenly spaced beans. So that's what I'm doing here. And although I'm having to leave quite a lot of space between like the more densely packed rows, I'm not actually losing any growing space because if I was going to sow them evenly across the whole bed, I'd have to leave considerably more space between each seed to give them room to grow. But because they're growing in kind of a regimented line, I've been able to sow them quite close together because the plants themselves will be able to grow outwards and they've got a bit of space to do that. So I'm not actually losing any growing space and I just think it's gonna make it so much easier. <laughs> yeah. Uh, actually, somebody asked me the other day where I got my knee pads from. These ones. They're pretty good, actually. They're the ones that I... Oh, I'm getting very close. Sorry. <laughs> That's better. Um, yeah, they're pretty good. They're from Burgeon and Ball, uh, and they're like got a memory foam pad in them. They're really good. They weren't very expensive. If I can find them online, I'll put a link underneath, but they're really good. I mean, they're not the most attractive thing in the world. In fact, today I'm dressed a bit like a garden gnome. Have a look at this for an outfit. Got the dungarees and the knee pads. Quite the fashion show. <laughs> okay, broad beans in. Oh, I get to do the crossing off thing now. Woo! Okay, in other news, do you remember when I did the episode about introducing you to the girly whirly woos? It was, uh, I was talking about when I thought they might start laying and I'd said I thought it might have been the spring because obviously as we're coming into autumn and they start laying like chickens tend to kind of stop laying in the winter and that sort of stuff. Well, you will have noticed the last couple of episodes, we have actually had eggs, but I've been thinking that it was just Ruby who was laying. Ruby seems to be sort of much more advanced <laughs> than the other girls. And I know it was her to begin with. She was the first one because uh, she was quite obviously laying an egg, like she would shout about it. And it was quite clear that it was only one of the girls who was laying. But yesterday we were up here, collected an egg, and we came back today and look at this we have another chicken laying. <laughs> I don't know who it is. I'm guessing this one, this one is quite a lot smaller. So I'm guessing this is the new, I'm guessing this is Ruby and this is whoever started recently. But yeah, two out of three is not bad for little girlies. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited. It's so lovely to have eggs again. And also it's nice to know that they're happy enough to be laying, so yeah. Excellent news all round.
He's so good. Hey, little girl. Are you so gorgeous? <laughs> Who's that? Are you beautiful? Yeah, you are beautiful. Girls on the shelf, huh? and it doesn't, it only goes halfway. <laughs> Bit of a net update, look at this. We are catching leaves quite happily. As you, these are just the ones off here, but we have caught quite a good little haul. Can you see those two dips at the back? Quite a good haul off the back. And uh, how satisfying does that look? Broad beans are in. Raspberries are eaten. <laughs> Cosmos is still flowering magnificently. I absolutely love Cosmos. I really think it is a gorgeous flower. I think it's an absolute joy. I tried to grow a couple of more unusual varieties. I had lemonade and strawberry lemonade, I think, but they were slugged almost immediately that I planted them out. So I'm gonna have to have another go at them next year. Right, what's next? Ah, there's a hot lemon chili that needs taking, isn't there? I think that's probably about it, chaps. Um gonna head home it's kind of approaching glass of wine o'clock which is always a nice time to get home for I love this time of year though so it's like it's not cold it's not hot it's not raining <laughs> it's just it's just really really lovely I uh, won't see you tomorrow it's editing day tomorrow unless I come up here to edit which is a possibility if it's not raining yeah anyway yeah, that is about it for today up here it's just starting to lose the light a bit now, so uh, definitely home time. Is always the question and the answer is inevitably no I haven't got everything I've always left something behind it's normally my house keys <laughs> uh, are we ready I think we are I put this hook up up here to put the keys on specifically so that when we open the shed door hang the keys on there then we know where they are has it happened yet mm, probably once and uh, they're not there now, so I'm not sure where they are. They might be in mum's pocket. Right, I think we've got everything. Yep. Found them. Cheers, chaps.
Well, the bean picking this year, I mean, there's been a lot of bean picking, but it's been a bit like, do you remember last year? So the first year of the vlogs, uh, it was just mulberry picking for about six weeks in the middle there. Every single vlog was me, like a montage of me picking mulberries. <laughs> That's been the beans this year. They've been incredible. So what I was gonna say, so when we had those beans, I noticed there's actually quite a big difference between the fresh and the dried beans. Obviously I said before, I'd never actually eaten them that fresh before. And they've got a very different texture. They were really delicious, but the dried beans have a really sort of deep, rich, creamy, creamy texture. Fresh ones, they kind of retained more of a bite, even though they were thoroughly cooked through, they didn't have the same texture as the dried beans and I preferred the dry beans. So what I'm gonna do is put all of the semi-dried ones. So some of those are just completely uh, green and the likelihood of them kind of drying off is pretty slim. But any of the ones that look like they're kind of part way there or just kind of heading into the drying, we're gonna stick in the actual dryer downstairs and see if we can dry them off that way. All of the ones which are properly dry will just shell and use later in the year. But yeah, totally different texture. The dry ones make a really phenomenal, I guess you'd call it a hummus, although obviously beans isn't hummus, but you know, that kind of like a mashed white bean with loads of garlic and olive oil. But having eaten the fresh beans, the texture of them, like they wouldn't mash like that. So I think I'm gonna have to learn to use them in different, different contexts, but still yum, still yum. So the next couple of weeks, firstly, thank you so much for, I had a huge response about doing the front garden. Um, I hope I haven't put this across as it being some massive project because our front garden is tiny. Like this is a little terraced house. It's really small and the front garden is just, you know, a patch off the pavement basically. And it looks an absolute state. <laughs> it's just kind of gravel and full of self-seeded stuff everywhere that we need to kind of move around and organize and do all of that sort of thing. But it is quite a small space and it's not going to be like a massive transformation project. It's just kind of pootling you know <laughs> but it's something that we need to do so that's going to be in next week's vlog we're going to be dodging rain showers though because uh, it's supposed to be raining most of next week which is just charming but still I'm going to do it next week because like i said previous week we have actually bought some plants for it and we haven't got them in yet so it's kind of high priority to kind of sort that out so that's going to be next week this is actually vlog number 80 believe it or not 80 vlog 81 is going to be bit of front garden, bit of stuff like that. Vlog 82, I'm going on holiday. Well, we're all going on holiday because you're coming with me. Uh, it's not sunshine beach holiday, <laughs> uh, but still it's, it's going away. So um, quite exciting. I'll reveal more about that next week. I'm starting to get overexcited, like I said last week about the lists and the varieties for next year. I'm um, getting a I've got my spreadsheet out and uh, yeah, we're heading in that direction. I have to um, update my plot map because we've put in, you know, where the carrot and coriander bed is. And then we've got the other bed, which I haven't kind of sorted out yet, but it's in place. Barbecues moved. We've got extra beds along the side where we had the French beans growing this year. So it's all changed since last spring. So I've got to update that map. Yeah, there's just loads of things to do. <laughs> but most of the big jobs that we've got to do up at the allotment, there's quite a lot of fruit tree pruning that we need to do, cutting back, clearing, that sort of thing. We're at a bit of an in-between stage at the moment, so it's not actually a great deal to do up there. Something we really need to do is get on cutting that grass. We just did that little section yesterday. We're trying to break it up into bits because mum's got a sore hip. I've got sore feet, obviously. So between us, you know, we're not exactly agile at the moment. And the grass has got so long that we're trying to kind of do it in stages. So, um, yeah, we're working on that slowly because there's nothing like when you've done your paths up the allotment. Like it's the same, I think, for people who have kind of mulched paths and that's kind of thing. When you get a new pile of mulch and you just make it all out fresh. So good. Same with kind of mowing the paths. It just everything just looks even if what's growing in the beds is a disaster. If you've got your paths sorted out, everything's good. <laughs> But yeah, this will probably be the last cut of that grass before winter. We don't need to cut the grass really over winter, obviously, because it's not growing so much. But this last couple of weeks, it's been warm and wet and it's just gone straight up. Anyway, you're not interested in the grass. Um, I'm going to say cheers. Cheers to the 80th, 
80th vlog and uh yeah here's to another 80 i suppose right i will see you next tuesday chat Sweet, my son, was he again?